guest is a children's author who carpools and bakes cookies and tweets. And uh, by the way, she also happens to be royalty. It is our pleasure and honor to welcome Her Majesty, Queen Rania of Jordan. <laughs> With respects to other queens, the most beautiful. Oh, you know, thank you. That's very kind of you, Barbara. <laughs> thank you. Um, I have had the pleasure of knowing Her Majesty for quite a few years, and um, I think even before you became Your Majesty. So you have been married now for what? How many years? Uh, I'm losing count. About 16 now. Yeah. 16 coming up to 17, 16. something like that. And you've been on the throne. <laughs> For 11 years. 11 years now. Married yeah. to King Abdullah. Yeah. You say that you don't think of yourself as a queen. What do you think of yourself as? Well, you know, I think, you know, I, I, like you said, it's been 11 years. And over time, I've gotten used to the position, maybe gained a bit of confidence. But I don't think there's one day that I haven't woken up and not felt that I need to earn this title. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't feel that the title entitles me to anything, uh -huh. you know. Well I feel that, uh, you know, I, I need to prove myself. I need to um, make sure that I espouse the right kind of values mm -hmm. and, and give the right kind of service to the people and help out. So it's, it's, it's just... Um, I distance the person from the persona, mm -hmm. if you will. You also get those children so, that you have to... Absolutely. At the end of the day, I think of myself as a mother, as a wife, you know, and, you know, you have the concerns that you have for your children, and, and you worry about whether they're right. doing well in school, etc. I mean, from the outside looking in, the, the people are very mesmerized by the whole queen thing, right. but for me, it's just everyday right. life, you well, know, yeah. and... I'm sorry, Your Majesty, uh, you, like you said, you have been married for 17 years, mm -hmm. but it, it seems like this is every little girl's dream uh, right. to, be, to be a, uh, you know, a Your Majesty. So how did you meet your king? Uh, I actually met him at his sister's house. I had invi been invited there for, for dinner, and he, he, was on, he was in the military, so he was in military exercise, but he had done so well. His dad said, why don't you go take a break and, um, you know, just hang out now and then for the weekend. And he happened to be at that dinner, and I think it just it was kind of like... Mm. He oh, says love it was love at first sight. Was it for you? It the was, truth? although I, I was personally intimidated by the whole royalty thing, you know. So uh, for me, you know, I wasn't sure what to make out of it. But at the end of the day, I, he was just a nice guy, and, and, um, and he was just, you know, a great guy. And we got to know each other, and it was just a normal relationship. So You may say that you feel as though you need to earn the title. When my daughter Grace saw your picture on the back and I told her um, who you were, and I said, Queen, she thought she hasn't stopped holding the book since. Really? So she, you, you've earned it in her eyes. But we sure. know if she sees me, she gets disappointed because I'm not wearing the crown. That's what yeah. they always expect. I want to ask you about... Oh, Sorry. go ahead, Will. Well, I, one of the things that I know that you really uh, have been pushing is the issue of education for young women. Mm. Absolutely. And you've been really on top of I'm that. I'm really, really passionate about that because I really feel when you think of girls, a lot of times people look at girls and they think they're just soft and vulnerable. Mm -hmm. But when you think of some of the most pressing issues in our world, mm -hmm. whether it's poverty, hunger, um, climate, everything, girls have the power to really transform societies. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the girls are made of steel when it comes to solving Especially these problems. If you educate a girl, you really change a nation. But especially um, in your right. part of the world. In every part of the world, you know, because when, you, when a girl gets educated, she gains confidence and self-respect. She wow. delays marriage and has uh, less children. Mm -hmm. She spends 90% of her income on the education and health of her own children, as opposed to men who only spend about 5 Fifty percent. Right. Sorry, guys. But, but I mean, that's, girls, that's the... A lot of girls in the world are held down by religion sometimes and men who are in power. A lot of girls, wherever I travel over the world, I just find that there is inequality when it comes to girls. It's like they're the, the last and, and the first out. So when things are going well, mm -hmm. they're the last to go to school. And right. when things mm -hmm. go bad, they're the first to be kicked is out. Is there inequality in your country? Is there? Inequality. inequality in your country. And not when it comes to education. In fact, you know, we have more women at the university level than we have uh, men, men and equal education at the primary levels. Oh. But there are many parts in the world, um, you know, there's 72 million children out of school today and the vast majority of them are girls. They're out because they're fetching water, they're working in factories, they're getting married early. We need to really prioritize them and, and get them back into school. Do the girls wear burqas in your country? No. We they don't do have burqas, no. Well, it's an interest, interesting that you should ask that mm -hmm. question because you've launched a, a YouTube channel right. to clear up Muslim stereotypes. Mm -hmm. 
If you wouldn't mind, would you just give us some ideas of what you've put on this so people will... Well, yeah, the, the idea was that, you know, the, I feel that there are a lot of stereotypes about Arabs and Muslims that are, you know, distorting and disingenuous. And uh, for all the politicians saying that we need to have cross-cultural dialogue, I think those things can, those bridges can be uh, made through conversations between people, through friendships. And it's not by lecturing. So the YouTube was a good way to get people involved. Uh, it started a global conversation. Uh, and, and I could see how like uh, contacts turned into friendships. And people were just submitting their stereotypes and views about Arabs. And we were just taking them down. I think people started to question yes. their assumptions and to th see things a little bit differently. Yeah. Well, and it's so important that we do this. We all have a vested interest mm -hmm. in, in, in seeing eye to eye. Well, Your Majesty, speaking of friendships, you wrote this very wonderful book. Again, we're talking mm -hmm. about The Sandwich Swap. And and uh, this Ooh, book was inspired by your childhood, a childhood mm -hmm. incident. Can you tell us about the sandwich swap? Well, actually, it was, it was when I was five years old. I used to um, uh, go to school, and uh, when it's lunchtime, I proudly unpack my, uh, you know, my, open up my lunchbox and with eat my, my lovely hummus, hummus sandwich uh, with that predictable hummus. texture. And it's just chick it's, it's chickpea paste. Yeah, it's yes. actually very, very healthy. It's a really yes. good option. And the girl sitting next to me, uh, who is American, she would bring out this, like, what I thought was purple gooey stuff that looked kind of revolting um, and I always thought mine was so much better and then uh, one time she asked me to, to take a bite and once I tried it I realized how much I loved it and at the very young age you know we I realized that you shouldn't sort of fear, fear the unknown or second-guess diversity because I had committed an injustice towards her by right, judging right. her without without even trying it. And yeah. the story is a great promise. way well, to Okay, I just want you to know that, that we have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and a hummus sandwich. And before I said to Shelly, which one do you want? And she said... Peanut butter and jelly. Okay, I'll take the <laughs> I kind of want the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, because I was going to do the hummus. I do the hummus <laughs> with pretzels. Okay. But it's, but it's, it's a really great story. It's really great important to instill those kind of values in, in our kids, especially now, because mm -hmm. we live in a global world, yeah. you know. Our kids can't get by just by confining themselves to their ne neighborhoods. Right. They need to get a feel for the world beyond. Right. And yeah. I think that enhances their chances of success. It makes them more likable when they can yes. relate to other cultures and other people, you know. So I, I, that's so this is not bad at all. How's that? that how much yeah. not, well, it's not it's not bad, bad at all. I'm glad you I, like I, it. Should, <laughs> I'd rather have the peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> But it is a book that has a message that's a charming book, Your Majesty. We're very happy to... <laughs> I'll have to swallow the hummus. We're very happy to have had you on with us Thank today. Thank you so much. It was great to be A great pleasure here. and an honor. Thank, Thank you, you so for much. being with wonderful us and for the wonderful work that you're doing you. for your country. Thank you. And